the morning, guys, from Uist. Look at this lovely view. It doesn't get any better. Don't mind the snow. A bit more task when you've got livestock. Look at the lock. Proper frozen over. But hey, let's talk about the chickens and the duckies. So as you can see, guys, I have been busy. And you must be thinking, what fortress is this thing for my chickens and ducks? But if you guys are from the States, you might not know this, but over here we have bird flu. And we have a lot of battery farms here. I'm sure you guys have battery farms too, but there's a hell of a lot of them. And they keep breeding all these annoying kind of avian, flipping HGN1 type viruses. And it's kind of just, yeah, basically the protocol front right now for your birds is to kind of keep them in check and kind of lock them up or keep them in barns. And as you can see from my coops here, I couldn't keep them in here all day. And plus, I think I recommend this to anyone who's got kind of chickens is just try and do this. I know it's a bit of a faff. Lots of pallets, loads of pallets all the way around. And it kind of just kind of homes in. It kind of, it focuses their their, their poo. But we'll talk about that in a sec. So welcome. I'm now in the, kitchen, the, the compost area or the chicken and duck area. And firstly, let's talk about the duck coop. As you can see, the ducks have grown pretty big. And they're getting pretty used to me. We see that, he's gonna fly off now, or she, sorry. And they st I still haven't clipped their wings. This one's always last the things. Bit of a dope if I'm honest with you. They had music would be but anyways, let's talk about the coop. Sorry Alfonso, this coop that we named the cock Alfonso. My dad was gonna call me Alfonso. Oh, you're so clumsy. Wait, I am not surprised, look how big his feet are. Jeez. Anyways, mate, I'm trying to talk about this place. Come on. Nice one. Come on. He's a lovely boy. He's not very bolshy either. That's really, I've, I've seen some cocks and they're very, very aggressive. What's going on over here? It's band practice. <laughs> I'd love to know what they're on about. Is it like sugar babes? <laughs> but anyways, mate, this is not your coop. So, this is the coop. This is my first coop I ever made. This is the duck coop and it was made out of the bottom of a old wardrobe. I'll put a picture up now so you can see what it looked like. And I went to town with it really. So four brackets, two bits of ply on the front and nice bit of corrugated doubled up as well. It was, I did have an accident, a slight accident with it because the wind comes from this direction here. This is south that way, south's over there, west is here and the wind comes from this direction and we're quite a high on the slope and it just went whoosh. You might have seen that video if you're, if you're new to here, that's what happened. So then I had to kind of reinforce this and kind of fold down the sides and make it kind of put some rocks on the top because I underestimated the wind in US and I put a, a link up here so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is a deep litter system. Full of hay and full of poo, as you can see. So I was kind of funky now, so I need to agitate and add to the system. So what I will normally do is I add biochar. Click a link if you want to know how I can make biochar and hay, because they absorb the nitrogen. Well, absorb the nitrogen. Absorb the kind of absorb the goodness from the what do you call it from this system here. So another little tip i say it because we'll find this out in the video but an ounce of charcoal or biochar can absorb as the surface area of a football pitch and that's insane that to me that's even that's bonkers mate so so this is it so it's pretty this cost me about 35 quid this whole coop and pretty proud of it it's done it's done it's done its job and like i said it's not kind of it's deep litter but it's not it's got a, a floor to it because i was worried that when i got the ducks they were little and i didn't want them to kind of yeah, I didn't want the rats to come in. I know rats can nibble for wood, but I was just praying every night like they just didn't take in. So I didn't want anything to kind of burrow underneath and then wake up to kind of a massacre. So that's why. So let's talk about the chicken coop now. So this is chicken coop 2.0. And if you're new to here, I've had like two other chicken coops. One I used for one night, but it was a bit too small. Another pyramid one, but this is by far the best one. So this coop could potentially house 15 hens or 15 chickens. So we start off on this side and this, like I said, the prevailing wings come from this way. So what I've done, I reinforced this side and this is kind of a pallet. We've kind of filled with hay and then put some more pallet slats on top just to kind of keep it kind of protected because you know if the hay gets wet it warms up but at the same time it's dry so now lovely insulator so i put some food inside because chickens don't really like the rain too much and when it snows and stuff so that's why they kind of do their thing and there's two free by f come on kelly this is kelly by the way if you're wondering who this chicken is it's kelly beyonce 
and Alfonso is the cop. And I've yet to name the rest of them because the other two, the other rest of them look kind of similar. But there's one called Crazy Legs, but this one's not too happy. I'm trying to show everyone the t um, the coop, love. Yeah, need to show it off. Yeah, but anyways, if you're looking here, sorry, look, tell me, yeah, she's moving now. If you're looking at it, you should be able to just see in there there's a the hay and obviously aeration is key. Aeration, aeration when it comes to the chicken coops. There's two roosting bars, but they tend to use use one. They all fit on there. They're kind of big birds really. Like all six of them just huddle up on there. And in front of the male always sits up there. And you should see every morning he comes out with like all the rest of them stroll out, but he has to just just fumble out. Yeah, I'll show you a video now. He's mad, isn't it? But here, so this is this is a water. This is how I've got it because they tend to be messy. They mess it up and just make it go all over the place. It's quite annoying after a while. So I've placed this here so they don't gonna trample on it. And as you saw, they're quite clumsy. They do that with their food. So they obviously they do that with their water. So they can get water here and it froze over last night. And this is the lovely duck pond. So they've got a little ladder there. It's quite sweet. They don't need it anymore, but it's quite nice to see them walk up it. There you go, love. <laughs> so and if you if you're new here. I scavenged this and this was an old wardrobe and yeah I was going to turn it into something I was going to turn it into another coop but I thought why not just turn it into a nest box so if you look now I've cut shoes with some holes in the back and that's one nest box and over here is another one this is the main one they use and it's quite sweet we get three eggs a day now and yeah it's a lovely thing and if if I were to have 15 birds I would turn this because for five birds, you need one nest box. So I've got six at the moment, because I only want one cock. But if I get in more hens, I would have to turn this section here into a um, into a nest box so that, yeah, so it can house, so they don't start sleeping in it. Because the first night they did, so you have to block it off. They do block it off. And over here is their bath, their sand bath. So they can have a little wash and stuff like that. They do enjoy it. They do like going in a compost seat from time to time, but yeah, it's all closed off to the outside world. So what I forgot to mention in here is this, there's no base to this floor, there's no bottom. So this deep lit system should keep adding and building up soil, building up worms and stuff. So, and if you're new to deep lit systems, deep lit systems, you can, you can clean them once a year or twice a year. So that's why it kind of looks a bit tight for me to get in and kind of get in there and do what I need to do and scrape it out. But I'm happy to move this once a year or twice a year. Like it doesn't bother me. So in the future when I move, because I'm not here forever, this place. I will kind of have a space where I can move it from the left or move it back or move it forward kind of things. And then I can utilize this and use the soil from here and then add it to compost or add it to the garden bed or and so on. So I thought, why not? Why just leave the deep bit system here? Because in here we've got, we've got chicken poo, we've got hay, we've got biochar, all doing the good stuff in there. So I thought, why just limit it to here? And now that these guys are locked down, I thought, why not just bring it to the whole area? So this area here is covered in hay. And this is their free, this is their spot. It needs, it, I'd, I'd like to have more birds here, but like I said, now I'm moving. Look at the, the ducks are getting stuck into the compost. See, it's not just chickens that compost people. Maybe it's just a breed. This is Muscov, this is a, these are Muscovies and they're kind of wild. They kind of get down and dirty, which I like to see. But hay is all over here. So this is just a carbon sink. And then the chickens come in and the ducks come in and they lay their nitrogen, their poo, which is full of nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus, more nitrogen than anything. And I add biochar to it too. And with the hay being up here, because this hay is full of seeds and what they do, they come in and they scratch and then take all the seeds out. So all the kind of annoyances or those wildflowers that you potentially don't want in your compost, these guys will pick through and it'll give them something to do. So I've laid a path today because... It's yeah, it snowed again, so they don't really like kind of getting cold feet. They're not a fan of it. But as you can see, my my bird barrier isn't working as well as I thought it would because there's a blackbird and a wren. But like I said, I feel sorry for them. I feel sorry, so I let kind of I let them be because I know I'm not. I know there's other people out there that aren't kind of blocking the birds out. But I mean, I, I don't. They're not migratory um, blackbirds nor wrens, so that's why I kind of just let them do what they're doing. So let's talk about the compost. So this is here just to kind of stop the kind of hay mixing up with the compost heat when the ducks do love to sit on here this is their preferred spot to kind of sit down and observe that's a piece of wood mate but um <laughs> but yeah so what i found here when it comes to compost is that it's really wet here it is really really wet and i have to kind of keep turning the soil and i'm in no rush i i, I find like Turning the soil is it just keeps me fit really. I don't really I don't see I don't see the rush in composting. I find it really strange that people compost or want to get like 18, eight, 18 days and have compost and stuff. Yeah, I just feel like why rush? Why rush kind of 
why rush things? Well, I don't understand. Like a compost shouldn't be rushed really, unless you kind of get desperate to plant stuff. But you should never be in that position to want to be desperate to plant certain things. Like growing food isn't really life or death. I'm sure it's in some places around the world. Don't get me wrong, but do you know what I mean. It's just like I just find it just I I I will always kind of go for, for passive compost other than kind of kind of rushing around, kind of get as compost as fast as you can, kind of thing. Like one of the most successful kind of composting systems I've ever seen. It's like one of my old clients we used to do is gather up some you know, all the brash and the grass that we collect for the whole season, put it in a compost bin. It's about three three foot by six foot. Nice bit of pond liner on the top, and then that kind of makes it nice and hot. And all the invertebrates come in, and you open it up, and there's wood lice, and there's ants, and they're going bonkers, they're doing stuff. Ants turn more compost than earthworms, people. So remember that. So don't be put off when you see them in there. And yeah, but six months later, or even a couple of months, I mean six months, less than that, it's all just perfect stuff to put back on the beds. I got a compost video coming up soon that will kind of talk about. Yeah, just talk about, I was eating old potato. We'll talk about basically I can make compost in one or two days. And I'm not kidding, I can get compost in one or two days. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And I'll go to depth in depth about kind of, pardon me, sheep mulching. And yeah, just, I love sheep mulching. Sheep mulching here is by far like something that needs to be done because it's lots of very peaty soil, very rocky and raid beds. Unless you've got a digger, as you can, if you look up there, on the hillside it's just like the rocks kind of stand out and looks kind of poke through and that's pretty much the the going rate for youist and you'll see in other videos i talk about nice rock and stuff like that so i'm just getting distracted by the ducks they're doing their thing again they're following the leader i need to get them ringed really so i know them i know cedar's named the mini newman noim but i think the last i call the last one mini and it's always the last of the game this one Remember the music I said? I'm thinking, what am I singing? But hey, so yeah, I'll talk more about sheep mulching because I think it's great and all the freebies that I can get it, like seaweed, sand, cow manure. I'm giving away too much away, but there's another secret ingredient and I use too. So we'll talk about that another day. And big, big shout out to Edible Acres. I'll put a link in the, in the top right of the screen. If you think my compost system or chicken system is great, these guys inspired me to get chickens. I've been up and down whether I want to get chickens or not, chickens or not. And I've, you know, I thought to myself, I can't be bothered. But then seeing and being with these guys, they've got 60 plus chickens, people. They've got a static site, but they kind of bash out compost like you've never seen. It's just, gr they, their plants, they've never seen, like, their plants are so green. The hens are always happy. They kind of scratch around come winter time. They've got like, basically they've got all what a chicken would need when it comes to, basically they've just got an amazing site. Okay, check them out. Sean and Sasha, they're the king and queens of compost, compost, chicken compost systems, honestly. They haven't got any ducks. So I'm trying to, trying to jazz it up with the ducks here. But, um, but yeah, they, they do great things, honestly. They Check them out. You will learn so much from them. Like I said, I put a link in the top right of the screen. And yeah, just you have hours of fun and you will learn so much. Honestly, I've learned so much from them big up you guys and looking forward to seeing what you do next that's it guys that is it that is me that is a compost system so these guys are going to scratch away now it's really cold here but this keeps them happy honestly if you've got chickens try and get a compost seep in their system or somewhere near them because they'll just have hours of fun look they've got food they've got food there but they rather just play here they just they just this is this is what they rather do this is what instinctively they want to do they were a bit slow to start off with the, the ducks would do it more so but these guys, these guys love it. So peace and hugs. And if you're new here, consider subscribing if you like what you see. And I'll be talking about compost in one or two days again, like I said. And sheep mulching and all things. Well, just how to deal and tackle peat and salty soils. And ridiculous wind in this crazy place up here. North Uist. Anyways, peace and hugs. Love you a long time and I'll see you soon.